Hello and welcome to our brief explanation of the dynamical systems theory. So, the dynamical systems theory is an approach to describing and explaining the control of coordinated movement that emphasizes the role of information in the environment in particular and the dynamic properties of the body and limbs and how that then relates to the task at hand. So what we have are these three elements, environmental, organismic and task constraints that are controlled in a way by our neuromuscular system to produce um, some sort of behaviour. And that behaviour is called an attractor state. Before we get to the explanation of all of these though, what we want to do is uh, just sort of touch on some of the key concepts within the dynamical systems theory. Firstly, our uh, key concept of linear, non-linear dynamics. So, when we think about our transition from one behavioural state to another, for instance, walking into running, that is a non-linear change in behavioural state. And so what we're doing is we're changing our preferred behaviour from one pattern to another. And that is a spontaneous shift that is um, largely controlled by some sort of constraint. So that's the first key concept. The second one is that to do this, we have a, a largely self-organizing organism in the human body. What do I mean by that? Well, if we think about the cardiac function, it self-organizes based on sensory inputs, based on perceived requirements, so on, that then causes fluctuations, dynamic fluctuations in cardiac output. The same sort of principle can be applied to movement production in that we have this ability to self-organize into a stable pattern of behavior, an attractor state. <clears throat> so that's our third key concept is that we organize into these behavioral steady states. And so we're trying to attain through spontaneous uh, self-organization and non-linear dynamics into new patterns of behavior that, are, that achieve the action goal. And lastly, the key, last key concept is that this requires complex interaction between multiple levels of the organism. So from the molecular level to the cellular level to the systems level to the whole organism level. And what we're talking about is having all of those levels of the organism being self-organized into these non-linear dynamics into attractor states. So what we're going to do now is talk about each of these um, sections uh, to give a bit more context. So we're going to start at the end, the attractor states. So an attractor state is our preferred behavioral steady state. Um, so it's a stable pattern of behavior by which our neuromuscular system spontaneously shifts. And the way we can conceptualize a, an attractor state is sort of a well which a ball can fall down into. So if we have a nice deep well, that means that our attractor state is well ingrained. It, <clears throat> we have a preferred behavior that is able to be obtained and utilized to produce an, an outcome, a movement outcome. So a lot of perturbation would be required to get that ball out of that well. So there's a lot of perturbation, and by perturbation might take the form of movement speed. So if we need to speed up movements, <clears throat> often something can go wrong. And that's because we've caused so much perturbation in the system that that ball starts to flick out of that well. And so we can imagine that we've got this attractor state, this first one. And imagine that we are a small toddler and we've developed this attractor state for walking. But what do we notice when they start to try to speed up actions? What happens is they often fall over. And that's because they most probably have not developed the attractor state to shift into for running. So that attractor state is not so developed 
that ball shifts from first attractive state, which is walking, into the second attractive state, which is running. And when it does so, any kind of perturbation in speed, so speeding up even further of uh, gait pattern, will cause that ball to fall out and we get this disrupted behaviour, we trip over, so on. <clears throat> so that's what an attractor state is. Now what controls attractor states? Um, well, it's coordinative structures. And we're talking about the neuromuscular structures in particular. And we're coming back to that concept of self-organisation. So our coordinated structures dynamically self-organise their motor units, so on, uh, into functional units that can constrain those degrees of freedom uh, of the uh, nervous system and the neuromuscular system to then say, okay, create this attractor state or perform the action using this attractor state. But what informs the coordinated structures? Well, it's our perception-action coupling. So the perception-action coupling idea is that we have these spatial and temporal coordination dynamics that are occurring. Perception can't happen without action, and action can't happen without perception. Remembering that action is the motor function, perception being the sensory um, function. So. <clears throat> Within the dynamical systems theory, these two are very intertwined. Um, we have sensory uh, impressions that are the result of actions, and our actions are then uh, decided upon about, uh, based upon our perceptions. And so um, what will happen is as we perceive and are trying to formulate a movement um, action, then we are deciding on which coordinative structures should be utilised or constrained by the central nervous system to then shift into an attractor state. But largely, our control parameters or constraints will then shape our perception and action coupling. So environmental constraints might be whether there's lighting or bad lighting or whether there's rain or wind, so on. <clears throat> Organismic constraints are within the individual. So do they have constraints in terms of um, limb lengths, weight, size, um, distribution of fast twitch, slow twitch fibres, so on. They are then plugged in as a constraint um, to couple with the environmental constraints. And lastly, the task constraints. So what is required? What is the task that's trying to be um, undertaken? Do I need to run? Do I need to walk? Do I need to catch a ball? Whatever. And what are the rules that um, surround that task as well? All of these are dynamic in, this, in terms of changing from one point in time to another. Um, and will then influence how we perceive and also influence the decisions on actions. We then need to um, functionally constrain the central nervous system, and in particular the neuromuscular system, to then create an attractor state um, or play out an attractor state, which is our preferred behavioural state. And so over time, what we will get is a deepening of that attractor state if it's a very um, a preferred and um, um, efficient movement pattern. So then we can develop further that uh, those uh, neuromuscular systems, uh, coordinated structures, sorry, that can constrain that action and we get better at perceiving and deciding on actions. Um, based on the constraints of that dynamic environment, organism and task requirements. So that was our uh, short introduction to our general, uh, sorry, dynamical systems theory. Um, thanks for listening and talk to you soon.